Welcome to HSML 4362, Dispute Resolution in the Workplace. This is Module 1. You will go through these slides and that accompany everything in your textbook, The Complete Guide to Conflict Resolution in the Workplace by Masters and Albright. We will first review the syllabus and then Canvas instructions. And then we will actually go through each of the chapters. Module one consists of chapters one, two, through three. Here in chapter one, we will uh, First of all, we'll go ahead and take a look at the syllabus. If you have your syllabus in front of you, we will go directly through the syllabus. And uh, then we will continue on with the rest of the chapters in uh, the textbook. Each chapter in the textbook, you will see the uh, overview, the goals and the objectives for that particular chapter. I will also point out the things that you need to know for the quiz. Chapter one is going to cover understanding workplace conflict. And these are some of the objectives that will be covered in that, uh, that chapter. First of all, we'll look at what is workplace conflict. We'll take a look at some of the conflicts that may be occurring in your workplace. We'll look at what types of conflict pervade the workplace and who, get, who gets involved in workplace conflict. What are the possible effects of con workplace conflict, especially when it is mishandled? What is on the menu of tools or techniques that managers can use to deal with conflict. But we'll also take a look at what you as an employee, whether you're a manager, upper level management or not, um, will be able to use some of the tools that we're going to see in uh, the first three chapters that will help you cover conflict resolution in the workplace. So what is workplace conflict? I know most of you have had an opportunity to be in the workforce for a while. Some of you have not. But for those of you that have experienced any type of workplace conflict, here's just some examples of what you will find or what you may have already experienced in uh, your workplace. If you've taken the mediation course, you've probably covered in great detail what conflict is, what conflict is not, what the responses to conflict are, what are the sources of conflict. But we're going to take a deeper dive into workplace conflict. So first of all, conflict is two or more that, dis dis that disagree um, there will be conflict. In the workplace, you will find that the setting in which, which is the setting in which work is performed. So you combine two or more people that are in disagreement within the workplace, that's workplace conflict. Uh, looking more at conflict, uh, you will find disagreement, real or perceived, and some of us have experienced that. Uh, there, the other most important thing about conflict is that it's inter interdependent. That just means that each person or each party needs something from the other party in order to get their needs met or whatever workplace project that they're working on uh, to be able to work together. That's where in the, in the interdependence comes in. Conflict may involve um, 
may evolve into formal challenges, contests, or just full-blown disputes. And conflict may be amenable to mutual resolution or require intervention to solve. Conflict may be legitimate or seem highly petty or misguided and irrational. And we've all experienced that at some point where we, um, we hear the phrases, um, they're just not a good fit or they're not a team player, or they don't get along with, with the other uh, workmates. So that's usually the beginning or the start of conflict. And so when you look at what a workplace is, as I mentioned earlier, it's the setting in which work is, is performed, no matter whether it's a service or if, you're, if it has something to do with the product that you're selling or your company is selling. Uh, it's usually seen as boundary-based definition. And prior to the pandemic, it was really literally boundary-based because we were inside the walls of uh, a building or a, uh, a organization. Uh, today's workplace is increasingly seamless now that we're remote and a lot of people are working from home. It's also a psychological space of activity uh, than, a fit more, than a physical site at this point. Uh, we still are using technology, actually using technology more so now that uh, there are more remote work environments. Technology makes it possible to work with others who are separated by any common physical setting. And then you also look at workplace conflict. You bring in all of the things we just mentioned about conflict and you bring that into the workplace and you still have your disagreements between two or more parties that are in a depend, interdependent in the workplace and then the common physical site or medium uh, through which work is actually performed. So there are different types of workplace conflict uh, that can occur. You've got your interests, rights, and power um, based types of conflict. Your interest con interest based conflicts in the workplace are conflicts over interests, concern, disagreements that affect what people want or need to perceive as a result of their association. And then rights basically looks at what are your rights? All of those things that you find in your uh, employee handbook, um, all of the policies and procedures that have been written for the workplace. And then you are up against power. And that's the sheer exercise of power. Who has it? When should it be used? And how should it be used? Uh, can pro provoke controversy at times. So who gets involved in workplace conflict? Anyone in the workplace? And if you see here on the slides, uh, conflict, uh, may arise between managers and employees across the units or divisions with no direct lines of authority. And also conflicts may arise between managers and employees with the firm and those whose work is contracted or at least temporarily. In the workplace, you'll find more conflict may arise between managers and employees on the one hand but then you also can see conflict come up between suppliers and customers. Conflicts may arise among and between managers and employees in a more traditional reporting or uh, employment relationships, any kind of relationships that are built in the workplace. So what are the effects of conflict at work? They can have many effects. They can have monetary effects. They can have psychological, emotional effects. It can um, not only just affect the business side of things, uh, which would include productivity 
and uh, also uh, any kind of risk factors that could come up in the workplace and also opportunities. Uh, professionally, uh, it can affect how, um, how we advance and how we network with each other in the workplace. And all of these things are interconnected, which make them interdependent. So what are your options? If you have conflict in the workplace, if something comes up, what are your options now? A lot of people have chosen to go to uh, human resources. Uh, some agencies and some organizations have uh, diversity, equity, inclusion offices, Title IX offices in uh, the university setting but what are some things that you can do and when you're in conflict there are a lot of options out there and we're going to cover all of these options on the slide on this slide which are option one is negotiation option two would be facilitation option three would be mediation option four would be ombuds which i will definitely explain more about because I am in a position as an ombuds right now. Uh, option five is advisory arbitration. And option six would be your binding arbitration. And we will look at all of these in our next module in detail. Uh, the workplace, these options can be structured so that they can be used sequentially with limited backward and forward movement. And this gives greater versatility uh, to the menu, making it somewhat a la carte. So the options are you can choose to resolve it in a formal or an informal way. Uh, so those are some of the things that uh, we will actually take more, um, take a better look at. So in chapter two, we're going to look at how you diagnose conflict. What, when, when conflict comes up, what do you do to, um, to work through conflict? And so the objectives are going to be uh, what causes, what are the causes and indicators? What is the cost of conflict? And we're also going to review the various types of factors that may give rise to conflict. Explore the cost of conflict and review uh, the checklist to guide our thinking through conflict. So con conflict diagnosis and a measurement model. This chart that we're looking at or the chart that's displayed right now actually takes a look at the sources that produce conflict. What are those indicators? What are some things that can trigger or, or be signals to conflict? And then how, how you measure that. So on the environmental perspective, uh, there's several different uh, ways to look at conflict. Sources producing conflict could be either environmental, organizational, they could be a part of the workplace, or it could be just an individual. And the indicators of conflict could be entry. Right when you start a job, uh, you go through learning what the company is all about, what the uh, policies and procedures are. And then maintenance, they may have you take certain courses or, or trainings to help you maintain and uh, that information. How your performance, uh, how your performance comes out through evaluations and so forth. Um, employee relations and security, decision making, and quality of life. All of those are indicators that could pop up when conflict occurs. And then how do you measure the cost of conflict? And it's either by direct cost, indirect cost, or opportunity that uh, that could, could, could happen. 
That's where the cost comes in.